Question 1. Paul and Arthur are joint tenants in a property. The two have an argument and Paul changes the locks on the gates to the estate, so that Arthur cannot enter. Arthur can. A. Sue Paul for wrongful ejectment. B. Physically attack Paul and claim the right of self-defense because his property interest was threatened. C. Sue Paul for his fair share of the rent value for the time that Arthur was kept off the property. D. Both A and C. Correct answer is D. Both A and C. If one co-tenant ousts the other co-tenant, the victim of the ouster can sue for wrongful ejectment. The tenant who wrongfully ejects the other tenant can be compelled to pay the fair market rental value for the property covering the length of time of the ouster. Question 2. Generally, escrow companies base their prorations on a year consisting of a 355 days, b. 360 days, c. 365 days, d. 366 days. Correct answer is b. 360 days. Escrow firms rely on 30 days months, a 360 day year for simplicity and ease of calculation. This is a standard practice in the real estate industry. While a calendar year has 365, or 366, days, using 360 days simplifies the calculations involved in prorating items like property taxes, homeowner association fees, and interest payments between the buyer and seller during the closing process. Question 3. A typical seller representation agreement authorizes the listing agent to do all of the following, except a. Place a, for sale, sign on the property. B. List the property on a multiple listing service, MLS, C. Open an escrow account in the owner's name, D. Accept on the owner's behalf a good faith deposit from a prospective buyer. Correct answer is, C. Open an escrow account in the owner's name. Escrow won't open until the escrow officer receives a fully executed purchase contract and buyer's deposit. While a listing agent typically handles many aspects of the selling process, opening an escrow account is usually done by a title company or closing agent, not the listing agent. The escrow account is a neutral third-party account used to hold funds related to the transaction. Question 4. A married couple originally from the Middle East come to broker Betty's office San Diego and tell her they are interested in viewing potential homes to buy in the Rancho Gardens neighborhood. Even though the broker has several listings in that area, Betty, for no other reason than their national origin, tells the couple that nothing is available in Rancho Gardens. Betty has committed the illegal practice of A. Blockbusting B. Antitrust C. Steering D. False advertising Correct answer is C. Steering Steering is specifically prohibited by the Fair Housing Act and the regulations of the Real Estate Commissioner and can result in fines and or suspension or license revocation for the offending licensee. Steering is a discriminatory practice where real estate agents attempt to direct buyers or sellers away from certain neighborhoods based on their race, religion, color, national origin, sex, disability, or familial status. In this case, Betty is steering the couple away from Rancho Gardens based on their national origin, which is illegal. Question 5. The FHA requires loan applicants to make a down payment of at least of the sales price of the property. A. 1.5% B. 0. 02 C. 0. 05 D. None of the above. Correct answer is D. None of the above. The FHA, Federal Housing Administration, does require a down payment, but it's significantly lower than conventional mortgages. For borrowers with a credit score of 580 or higher, the minimum down payment is 3.5% of the sales price. If your credit score is below 580, the down payment requirement increases to 10%. Question 6. Constructive notice for a lien is provided when recording a a trust deed b covenant c change of ownership d easement in gross correct answer is a trust deed a covenant is a legal agreement that restricts the use or enjoyment of property while it can affect property rights it doesn't directly create a lien change of ownership 
Recording a change of ownership simply updates the property records but doesn't create a lien. Easement in gross. An easement in gross is a right to use someone else's property for a specific purpose. It doesn't create a lien. Recording a trust deed provides constructive notice to the world that a lien exists on the property. This means that anyone who subsequently acquires an interest in the property is deemed to have knowledge of the lien, even if they haven't personally been notified. Question 7. According to the terms of an agreement, a broker is to receive a commission of 7% of the sales price of a particular property that eventually sells for $300,000. How much commission will the broker receive? A. $50,000 B. $21,000 C. $2,100 D. $1,000 Correct answer is B. $21,000 Change the percentage, 7%, into decimal number, 0 0.07, first. Price equals $300,000 x 7 cents 300,000 sales price x 0 0.07 commission rate the broker's commission will be $21,000. Question 8. When a mortgage lender tries to persuade a borrower to take out a more expensive loan when he could qualify for a cheaper one, it is called A. Redlining B. Steering C. Loan Enhancing D. Push Loaning Correct answer is D. Push Loaning Redlining is a discriminatory practice where lenders refuse to give loans in certain areas based on factors like race, ethnicity, or income. Steering is a discriminatory practice where real estate agents attempt to direct buyers or sellers away from certain neighborhoods based on factors like race, ethnicity, or religion. Loan enhancing term doesn't have a specific meaning in the context of mortgage lending. Push loaning occurs when a lender tries to persuade a borrower into a more expensive loan than they qualify for, often to increase the lender's profits. This practice is considered unethical and potentially illegal. Question 9. Buyer Barry and seller Sean agree to a contract for the sale of real property. They each deliver all items to the escrow agent required in their jointly agreed to escrow agreement. During the escrow period, Barry asks if the deposit receipt can be released so he can have it examined by his accountant, but Sean refuses to allow this. The escrow agent should a. Release the deposit receipt, since the escrow officer is the agent of the buyer, b. Not release the deposit receipt. C. Require the parties to submit the dispute to an arbitrator. D. Resign the escrow account. Correct answer is B. Not release the deposit receipt. The escrow agent is a neutral third party acting as a fiduciary for both the buyer and seller. They are responsible for holding funds and documents until all the terms of the sale are met. Releasing the deposit receipt without both parties' agreement would violate the escrow agreement and could jeopardize the transaction. Resigning the escrow account would not resolve the dispute and could delay or jeopardize the transaction. The escrow agent should encourage the parties to discuss and resolve the issue amicably. If they cannot agree, the escrow agent may need to consult with legal counsel to determine the appropriate course of action. Question 10. Which of the following could be called an equitable remedy? A. Specific performance. B. Monetary damages. C. Injunction. D. Both A and C. Correct answer is D. Both A and C. Equitable remedies are court-ordered actions that seek to address unfairness or injustice when monetary damages alone are not sufficient. Here's a breakdown of the options. A. Specific performance. This is a court order requiring a party to fulfill their contractual obligation. For example, if a seller breaches a contract to sell a unique property, the buyer might seek specific performance to compel the seller to go through with the sale. B. Monetary damages. This is a traditional legal remedy that involves awarding money to compensate for losses. While monetary damages can be equitable in some cases, they are not exclusively considered equitable remedies. C. Injunction. This is a court order that prohibits or compels a party to perform a specific action. For example, a court might issue an injunction to stop a party from trespassing on someone else's property. 
Both specific performance and injunctions are considered equitable remedies because they involve court-ordered actions that go beyond mere monetary compensation. Question 11. Prospective buyers should be able to assume that whatever is attached to the property that is essential to its use will be included when property possession is conveyed. A. Appurtenant. B. Landmarks. C. Fixtures. D. None of the above. Correct answer is C. Fixtures. Appurtenant refers to something that goes along with or belongs to something else. While appurtenances can be fixtures, not all appurtenances are fixtures. Landmarks are notable or prominent features of a place, but they are not necessarily attached to the property and therefore not considered fixtures. Fixtures are items that are attached to the property and are considered part of the real estate. They are essential to the property's use and are typically included in the sale. Question 12. California charges a tax on the sale of business opportunities which include equipment and fixtures. The tax is called a, an, a, sales tax, b, excise tax, c, business tax, d, commercial income tax. Correct answer is, b, excise tax. Sales tax is commonly applied to retail transactions, it doesn't specifically target the sale of business opportunities. Business tax is a general term that can refer to various types of taxes imposed on businesses, but it doesn't specifically address the sale of business opportunities. Commercial income tax is a tax on the profits generated by commercial businesses, not on the sale of business opportunities. An excise tax is a tax imposed on specific goods or services, often luxury items or activities. In California, there is indeed an excise tax on the sale of business opportunities, including equipment and fixtures. This tax is typically collected by the seller and remitted to the state government. Question 13. The Real Estate Code of Ethics was created by the A. California Association of Real Estate Professionals B. HUD C. National Association of Realtors D. National Real Estate Foundation Correct answer is C. National Association of Realtors The National Association of Realtors NAR, is a trade association that represents real estate agents and brokers in the United States. They have developed the Realtor Code of Ethics in 1913, a set of standards that members must follow. This code outlines ethical guidelines and principles for real estate professionals to adhere to. Question 14. A written summary of the chain of title for a parcel of real property taken from public records is called a, an, a, a bridged chain of title, b, abstract of title, c, title update, d, link of title. Correct answer is, b, abstract of title. An abstract of title or title abstract is a written summary of the chain of title for a parcel of real property. It provides a historical record of all recorded documents that affect the property's ownership, such as deeds, mortgages, and liens. Question 15. A contract that is voidable is A. Binding B. Binding now but can be voided by the injured party C. Not enforceable under any cherustances D. Modifiable Correct answer is B. Binding now but can be voided by the injured party. A voidable contract is initially binding, but one party has the option to rescind it, make it void, under certain circumstances. This typically occurs when there is a defect in the contract, such as 1. Misrepresentation. A false statement that materially affects the contract. 2. Fraud. A deliberate misrepresentation intended to deceive. 3. Duress. Coercion or threats forcing someone into a contract. 4. Undue influence. Taking advantage of someone's weakness or vulnerability. Until the injured party chooses to void the contract, it remains enforceable. However, they have the option to rescind it and return to their original position. Question 16. Upon the execution of a trust deed, the power of sale is given by the to the A. Truster to the beneficiary, B. Truster to the trustee, C either A or B D beneficiary to the truster. Correct answer is B. Truster to the trustee.
A trust deed is a legal document used in some states to secure a loan. It involves three parties. 1. Truster, the borrower who owns the property. 2. Beneficiary, the lender who is providing the loan. 3. Trustee, a neutral third party who holds the title to the property. When the trust deed is executed, the truster, borrower, grants the power of sale to the trustee. This means that if the borrower defaults on the loan, the trustee has the right to foreclose on the property and sell it to satisfy the debt. Question 17. Depth tables are a tool employed by A. Real estate brokers B. County assessor C. Appraisers D. Well builders Correct answer is C. Appraisers Depth tables are a tool used by appraisers to estimate the value of land based on its depth. They show how the value of a lot changes as its depth increases. Appraisers use depth tables to help determine the overall value of a property. It displays the percentage changes in land value due to differences in lot depth. Lot depth is measured by drawing an imaginary line from the midpoint of the front property line to the midpoint of the rear property line. If there is no rear property line, the line is drawn to the most distant point on another lot line. The 4321 table, for examples, describes the front quarter of a parcel as representing 40% of its total value, the next quarter as 30% of value, the next quarter as 20% of value, and the rearmost quarter as 10% of value. Question 18. A contract to perform an unlawful act is A. Void B. Valid C. Executable D. Voidable Correct answer is, A. Void. A contract to perform an unlawful act is not valid, enforceable, or capable of being rescinded. It is simply void and has no legal effect. This means it is unenforceable by either party. Question 19. A mortgage covering more than one parcel of property usually provides a clause allowing the release of a particular parcel on repayment of a specified part of the loan. This type of loan is called a a. Blanket loan. B. Package loan. C. Open-end loan. D. Swing loan. Correct answer is A. Blanket loan. A package loan includes both real property and personal property as collateral. An open-end loan is a type of credit line that allows you to borrow additional funds up to a certain limit. A swing loan is a short-term loan used to bridge the gap between the sale of one property and the purchase of another. A blanket loan is a mortgage that covers multiple parcels of property. It often includes a release clause that allows the borrower to release a specific parcel from the mortgage upon paying off a specified portion of the loan. This is useful when a borrower wants to sell or refinance one parcel without affecting the other properties covered by the blanket loan. This blanket loan is typically used in connection with housing tracts or construction loans. Question 20. The majority of electrical outlets in homes supply volts of power. A. 50, B. 110, C. 500, D. 1000. Correct answer is, B. 110. The majority of electrical outlets in homes in the United States supply 110 volts of power. This is the standard voltage used for most household appliances and electronics. Certain outlets designed for major appliances like ranges, water heaters, and dryers supply 220 volts. Question 21. The terms and conditions of the sale of a home property generally have an impact on the properties. A. Appreciation. B. Tax rate. C. Price. D. Depreciation. Correct answer is C. Price. The terms and conditions of the sale of a home property directly impact its price. Factors like financing terms, contingencies, and closing costs can influence the final sale price. For example, financing terms, a seller may be more willing to negotiate the price if the buyer offers a larger down payment or a stronger financial profile. Contingencies, if the sale is contingent on the buyer obtaining financing or selling their current home, the seller may be more willing to negotiate the price to ensure the deal goes through. Closing costs. The buyer and seller can negotiate who will pay for closing costs, 
which can affect the net price the seller receives. While the terms and conditions of the sale can indirectly influence the property's appreciation, tax rate, and depreciation, the most direct impact is on the price that the buyer and seller agree upon. Question 22. The term, megalopolis, refers to a. Cell phone providers, b. Large states, like California or Florida, c. Utility companies, like Southern CA Edison or PG and ED. A group of cities and its surrounding suburbs. Correct answer is D A group of cities and its surrounding suburbs. Megalopolis refers to a large, densely populated urban area formed by several cities merging together. It's often characterized by sprawling suburbs, interconnected transportation systems, and a high concentration of economic activity. The Greater Los Angeles area is a prime example of a megalopolis in California. It encompasses several major cities, including Los Angeles, San Diego, San Bernardino, Riverside, and Orange County, as well as numerous suburban areas. This vast urban region is home to millions of people and is a major center for business, entertainment, and culture in the United States. Question 23. A 17-year-old soldier in the U.S. Army decides to try to buy a studio apartment. The listing agreement he signs is a. Invalid, B. Valid, C. Illegal, D. Subject to challenge by his parents. Correct answer is B. Valid. A legally emancipated minor may enter into any type of contract. A minor can be emancipated by marrying, petitioning a court of law, service in or joining the military. 17 is the minimum age for enlisting. Question 24. If a lease does not mention whether the tenant has the right to assign the leased property, then the A. Tenant can assign the property. B. Tenant cannot assign the property without the landlord's consent. C. Tenant cannot assign the property under any circumstances. D. Assignee must negotiate a new contract. Correct answer is a tenant can assign the property. Unless the terms of the lease contract prohibit assignment, a contract may be assigned to another person. Question 25. Which of these types of loan could have variable amortization? A. Calvet. B. Fannie Mae. C. VA. D. Any of the above. Correct answer is D. Any of the above. While Calvet, Fannie Mae, and VA loans are all common types of mortgages, they can all have variable amortization options. This means that the amount of each payment allocated to principal and interest can change over time. CalVet, the California Veterans Housing Program offers various loan options, including some with adjustable interest rates, which can affect the amortization schedule. Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae offers various loan programs, including some with adjustable interest rates or interest-only periods, which can impact amortization. VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs offers VA loans, which can have adjustable interest rates, particularly for certain types of VA loans. It's important to note that the specific amortization terms for each loan program and lender can vary, so it's crucial to carefully review the loan documents to understand the amortization schedule and how your payments will be structured. Question 26. In Southern California, most escrows are performed by a. Attorneys, B. Separate escrow and title companies, C. Property managers, D. None of the above. Correct answer is B. Separate escrow and title companies. In Southern California and many other parts of the United States, escrow is typically handled by separate escrow and title companies. These companies act as neutral third parties, facilitating the closing process and ensuring that all funds and documents are handled properly. Question 27. Of these mortgage providers, which one generally offers the highest loan-to-value ratios (LTV) for conventional loans? A. Savings banks. B. Private lenders. C. Life insurance companies. D. Commercial banks. Correct answer is A. Savings banks. While savings banks, commercial banks and insurance companies are the largest providers of real estate loans, it is savings banks best known for specializing in funding home mortgages. Question 28. The state's Fair Employment and Housing Act is also called the A. Rumford Act, B. Holden Act, 
C. UNRU Act. D. Employment Protection Act. Correct answer is a Rumford Act. The California Fair Employment and Housing Act, also known as Rumford Act, prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental or financing of housing. Housing Financial Discrimination Act, Holden Act, prohibits discrimination in real estate lending. The UNRU Civil Rights Act covers discrimination in business. The Rumford Act also outlaws advertising housing for sale or rent in discriminatory terms, including ads that imply a preference for a certain group such as a landlord who indicates he likes to have married couples as tenants. Question 29. Gordy's 10-year-old Chevrolet broke down again, and in disgust he said to his friend, Steve, I'll sell you my orange Chevy for $10. When Steve produced the cash and asked Gordy for the keys, Gordy refused to accept the money and said he'd only been joking about selling the car. If Steve sues his now ex-friend Gordy to go through with the transaction, the court will base their ruling on A. Whether a reasonable person would have believed Gordy's offer to sell his car for $10 was genuine or a joke, B. Whether Steve had believed Gordy's offer to sell his car for $10 was genuine or a joke. C. Whether an automobile dealer would appraise Gordy's car with a value of $10, D. Whether the car would be able to run the next time Gordy tried to start it. Correct answer is A. Whether a reasonable person would have believed Gordy's offer to sell his car for $10 was genuine or a joke. In contract law, the objective theory of contracts is used to determine whether a valid contract exists. This theory focuses on the outward manifestations of the party's intentions, rather than their subjective beliefs. In this case, a court would consider whether a reasonable person in Steve's position would have believed Gordy's offer to be a serious intent to sell the car for $10. If a reasonable person would have believed the offer was genuine, then a contract could be considered to have been formed. However, if a reasonable person would have understood that Gordy was joking, then no contract would exist. Through the concept of the reasonable person, the law creates an objective standard to apply to each set of circumstances rather than the judgment of the people involved in the actual case. Question 30. When a seller accepts the actions of an agent, even without a previous agreement, then an agency may be created by a. Oral agreement. B. Implied agreement. C. Express agreement. D. Ratification. Correct answer is D. Ratification. While an oral agreement can create an agency relationship, it's not the specific scenario described in the question. An implied agreement can also create an agency relationship, but in this case, the seller's acceptance of the agent's actions would be the more relevant factor. An express agreement is a written or oral agreement that explicitly creates an agency relationship. While this is possible, the question specifically mentions a situation where there was no previous agreement. Ratification occurs when a principal, in this case, the seller, accepts the actions of an agent, even if there was no prior agreement to create an agency relationship. This can happen if the principal benefits from the agent's actions or fails to object within a reasonable time. Therefore, ratification is the most appropriate answer in this context. Question 31. Regulation Z. A is also known as the Truth in Lending Act, B. Governs the, Zoom rate, the interest rates for high yield bonds. C requires that borrowers be informed of the true costs of credit, D. Both A and C. Correct answer is D. Both A and C. The Zoom rate is not a term associated with Regulation Z. It might be a term used in a different context, such as finance or investments. Regulation Z is also known as the Truth in Lending Act. It's a federal law that requires lenders to disclose the true cost of credit to borrowers. This includes the annual percentage rate, APR, finance charges, and other relevant terms. Question 32. A pest control inspection of a property in escrow finds no termites, but conditions are discovered which might lead to an infestation later. Whose responsibility is it to pay for correcting these conditions? A. The buyer must pay for the conditions to be corrected. B. The seller must pay for the conditions to be corrected. C. The escrow company must pay for the condition to be corrected. D. None of the above. 
correct answer is D. None of the above. The buyer would pay for such pre-termite infestation conditions to be addressed, but only if she chooses, she is not compelled to do so. It's important to note that the specific responsibilities of the buyer and seller in this situation may vary depending on the terms of the purchase agreement and local laws. Question 33. A contingency clause in an agreement should a. State a time limit for its conditions to be met, b. State how the parties will be informed of the fulfillment or waiving of the clause, c. Both a and b d neither a nor b. Correct answer is C. Both A and B state a time limit for its conditions to be met. This ensures that the contract doesn't remain in limbo indefinitely. State how the parties will be informed of the fulfillment or waiving of the clause. This clarifies the process for communicating whether the contingency has been met or waived. By including both of these elements, a contingency clause provides clarity and structure to the agreement ensuring that the parties understand their obligations and the timeline for fulfilling the contingency. If a contingency clause is not met by a party within the agreed-upon time frame, then the other party can still continue with the transaction, but is not required to do so. Question 34. Which of the following statements is correct, regarding a buyer's agent? A. Buyer's agents are not entitled to a commission. B. Being a buyer's agent is a non-permissible arrangement in California. C. Compensation for a buyer's agent may be provided by another party besides the buyer. D. Buyer's agents do not enter into fiduciary relationship with a buyer. Correct answer is C. Compensation for a buyer's agent may be provided by another party besides the buyer. In California, buyer's agents typically work on a commission basis. However, the source of that commission can vary. It's common for the seller to pay a commission to the listing agent, who might then share a portion of that commission with the buyer's agent. This arrangement is known as a cooperative sale. The important point is that buyer's agents have a fiduciary duty to represent the buyer's interests and may receive compensation from various sources. Question 35. A purchase agreement must include a, an, a. Acceleration Clause B. Release Clause C. Executory Clause D. Alienation Clause Correct answer is C. Executory Clause. While other clauses may be found in a purchase agreement, also called a deposit receipt, it must include an executory clause, i.e., a promise of performance. Question 36. Which of the following is not essential to the creation of an agency relationship? A principal's competency, b. Agreement to pay consideration, c. Principal's consent, d. Establishment of a fiduciary arrangement. Correct answer is b. Agreement to pay consideration. An agency relationship can be created through an express agreement, implied agreement, or ratification. While consideration is often involved in other contractual relationships, it is not essential for the creation of an agency relationship. Here's a breakdown of the other options. A. Principal's competency. The principal must have the legal capacity to create an agency relationship. C. Principal's consent. The principal must consent to the agency relationship. D. Establishment of a fiduciary arrangement. The agent owes a fiduciary duty to the principal, acting in their best interests. Therefore, while consideration is often present in agency relationships, it's not a strict requirement for the creation of the relationship itself. Question 37. If a contract is agreed to under the threat of duress, it is a. Valid, b. Voidable, c. Enforceable under certain circumstances, d. None of the above. Correct answer is b. Voidable. A contract entered into under duress is considered voidable, meaning the injured party has the option to rescind the contract. Duress involves coercion or threats that force someone into a contract against their will. If the victim of duress chooses to void the contract, they can avoid being bound by its terms. Question 38. John is currently keeping $5,000 in an impound account on a trust deed on which he is getting payments from Gwendolyn. Which of the following is true regarding the impound account? A. The account can never exceed $5,000. B. The account must have a balance maintained that is equal to one year's taxes and insurance. 
c the account can generate interest for john if he keeps it in a saving bank d the account benefits the truster and the beneficiary correct answer is d the account benefits the truster and the beneficiary impound accounts are used by lenders to pay regular expected charges on the property like taxes and insurance such accounts aid the beneficiary safeguarding the property from the borrower defaulting on the loan if he cannot make the payments impound accounts also protect the borrower who can make small monthly payments which accrue for covering major expenses question 39 thomas an elderly man with a collection of classic cars lives next door to bobby a 16 year old high school junior and his family thomas promises that if bobby shovels snow from the sidewalk in front of thomas's house during the upcoming winter then thomas will let bobby select a car to keep from the older man's collection bobby does in fact keeps the sidewalk free from snow throughout the winter in april however a few days before bobby plans to pick out his car thomas dies thomas's estate administrator refuses to release any of the cars to bobby who sues bobby's lawsuit will probably a succeed because thomas is not present to contradict bobby's version of events b fail because bobby is a minor c fail because shoveling snow does not meet the standard of sufficient consideration for a promise to provide a car d succeed because courts generally do not rule on the relative value of consideration correct answer is d succeed because courts generally do not rule on the relative value of consideration in this case bobby has fulfilled his end of the agreement by shoveling the snow from thomas's sidewalk throughout the winter while the value of bobby's services might seem small compared to the value of a classic car the law generally does not require that consideration be of equal value as long as there is a mutual exchange of something of value, the contract can be enforceable. Therefore, Bobby's lawsuit is likely to succeed, as he has fulfilled his obligations under the contract and the court will not question the relative value of the consideration. Question 40. The following statements are true regarding exclusive listing contracts, except A. They are employment contracts. B. They note a promise for a promise. C. They can be verbal d they are bilateral executory contracts correct answer is c they can be verbal all listing agreements must be in writing an exclusive listing agreement includes a promise for a promise making it a bilateral agreement listing agreements amount to an employment contract between seller and broker the seller employs the agent to find a buyer for their property in many jurisdictions, there are specific requirements for written listing agreements, such as including the property address, terms of the sale, and commission information. While verbal exclusive listing contracts are technically possible, it's strongly recommended to have a written agreement to avoid misunderstandings and provide clear evidence of the terms of the relationship between the seller and the listing agent. Question 41. It is legally valid for a real estate agent to refuse to show a home to a person of color if a the agent has a reasonable belief that the person of color would not be welcomed by other residents of the neighborhood b the agent is too busy with other prospective buyers c the owner specified in the listing that his property showing only be shown in his presence and that owner is currently visiting another city d the agent is not a member of the national association of realtors and so is not bound by fair housing laws nor is his client correct answer is c the owner specified in the listing that his property showing only be shown in his presence and that owner is currently visiting another city an owner can restrict showings only if they are not discriminatory in nature in this scenario the requirement to show their property only when they are in town applies to everyone Discrimination and showing a property to someone based on their race, religion, or national origin is never permissible. Question 42. A broker owns a property that a married couple wishes to buy. As a condition for the sale, the broker requires that the couple relist the property with the broker, list back, whenever the couple decide to sell it. Such an arrangement would be A. Valid B. Valid, if the purchasers pay with cash, C invalid under the Sherman Antitrust Act, D. 
invalid under the provisions of anti-discrimination laws? Correct answer is C. Invalid under the Sherman Antitrust Act. The arrangement described in the question, where the broker requires the buyers to relist the property with them when they sell it, is known as a tying arrangement. Tying arrangements are generally considered illegal under the Sherman Antitrust Act, which prohibits anti-competitive practices. In this case, the broker is tying the sale of the property to the requirement that the buyers use their services again in the future. This restricts the buyer's freedom to choose another real estate agent and could potentially harm competition in the market. Therefore, the arrangement is invalid and would likely be considered a violation of antitrust laws. Question 43. Which is the best definition of a fee simple estate? A. A life estate. B. Title held by the owner without any restrictions. C. A term tenancy. D. The highest interest then can be held in land. Correct answer is D. The highest interest then can be held in land. A fee simple estate is the highest form of property ownership. It grants the owner complete and unrestricted rights to the land including the right to sell, lease, or otherwise dispose of the property. Question 44. When prepayment penalty provisions are not included in a mortgage loan, such a loan is called a, an, a open mortgage, b, loose mortgage, c, non-structured mortgage, d, lien loan. Correct answer is a open mortgage. An open mortgage is a type of mortgage loan that does not include a prepayment penalty clause. This means that the borrower can pay off the loan early without incurring any additional fees. This can be beneficial for borrowers who anticipate having extra funds available to pay off the loan sooner than planned. The promissory note for an open mortgage will usually state the borrower can make the mandatory payment, or more, on the stated payment date, when prepayment is allowed without penalty. Question 45. Under the Civil Rights Act of 1968, someone who feels they have been discriminated against while seeking housing may a pursue an action only in federal court b pursue an action in federal or state court c file criminal charges in state court d file criminal charges in federal court correct answer is b pursue an action in federal or state court an injured party can pursue a legal remedy for housing discrimination in either federal or state court the action would be a civil suit for personal damages, not a criminal matter. Question 46. James took back a first trust deed from Martha as part of the purchase price for his house. After three months, Martha defaulted on the payment. James the seller should A. Bring a suit for damages, B. Foreclose on the trust deed through a trustee sale, C. Rescind the contract, D. Bring a suit to compel specific performance. Correct answer is B. Foreclose on the trust deed through a trustee's sale. When a borrower defaults on a trust deed, the lender, in this case, James, has the right to foreclose on the property. This means the lender can initiate a legal process to sell the property at auction and use the proceeds to satisfy the outstanding debt. Question 47. The person named in a written power of attorney to legally act for someone else is usually referred to as a, an, a principal, B, fiduciary, C, agent, D, attorney in fact. Correct answer is D, attorney in fact. Anyone may convey the authority to act on their behalf. The document creating that authority is called a power of attorney. The one holding the power of attorney is an attorney in fact. An attorney in fact have the authority to make decisions and take actions specified in the document. Question 48. Mary, who is a minor, was left a property in her father's will. Mary then signs a grant deed to Sydney to deliver the property she owns. That property conveyance to Sydney is A. Valid B. Voidable C. Valid, if the property is worth less than $5,000 D. Void Correct answer is B. Voidable While a minor can inherit property, they generally lack the legal capacity to sell or convey real estate. Therefore, the grant deed signed by Mary would be voidable. This means that Mary, or her legal representative, could choose to rescind the contract and reclaim ownership of the property. 
Therefore, the grant deed signed by Mary would be voidable due to her minority status. Question 49. One big difference between a real estate option and a regular contract of sale is the options. A automatic expiration period of one year, b. Irrevocability, c. Mutuality of obligation, d. Lack of mutuality of obligation. Correct answer is d. Lack of mutuality of obligation. A significant difference between a real estate option and a regular contract of sale is the lack of mutuality of obligation in an option. In an option, only one party, the option holder, has the right to exercise the option and purchase the property. The seller is obligated to sell if the option holder chooses to exercise the option, but the option holder is not obligated to purchase the property. In a regular contract of sale, both parties have mutual obligations. The buyer is obligated to purchase the property, and the seller is obligated to sell it. Therefore, the lack of mutuality of obligation is a key distinguishing feature between an option and a regular contract of sale. Question 50. One of the main reasons for creating the secondary mortgage market was to a. Establish an auction network for junior deeds of trust, b. Maintain state oversight of the mortgage market, c. Provide balance between regions with a lack of mortgage funds and those with an overabundance of funds, d enable investors to earn a high return correct answer is c provide balance between regions with a lack of mortgage funds and those with an overabundance of funds the secondary mortgage market was created to address the issue of uneven mortgage financing availability across different regions of the united states by allowing investors to purchase mortgage loans from primary lenders the secondary market helps to channel funds to areas with high demand for mortgages even if those areas don't have a sufficient supply of local lenders. Question 51. An ALTA policy of title insurance does not insure against a forgery, b. defects in the chain of title, c. zoning changes, d. parties in possession. Correct answer is c. zoning changes. An ALTA, American Land Title Association, policy of title insurance provides coverage against various risks related to title defects, including 1. Forged documents. Forgeries in the chain of title. 2. Defects in the chain of title. Errors or omissions in the recorded documents affecting the property's ownership. 3. Rights of third parties. Claims or interests held by others that could affect the property's title. However, ALTA policies generally do not cover risks arising from zoning changes that occur after the policy is issued. If a zoning change affects the property's use or value, it's typically not covered by the title insurance. It's important to note that specific coverage may vary depending on the terms of the ALTA policy and any additional endorsements purchased. Question 52. Which of the following is a characteristic of a freehold estate? A. Always acquired with no payment necessary, B. Always acquired through some kind of easement, C. Of uncertain duration, D. Both A and C. Correct answer is C. Of uncertain duration. A freehold estate is a type of property ownership that is characterized by its indefinite duration. It means the owner has the right to possess the property for an uncertain amount of time, potentially forever. This is in contrast to a leasehold estate, which has a defined term or duration. Question 53. Percy submitted an offer to purchase a property accompanied by a deposit. The offer contained a clause that said the offer was contingent upon Percy obtaining a loan for $100,000 payable over 20 years, at an interest rate of less than 8%. Which of the following is correct? A. If the loan proves unavailable then Percy and the seller may agree to change the purchase price, b. If the only loan available is less than $100,000, then Percy must go ahead with the purchase anyway. c. If the loan proves unavailable, then Percy can withdraw his offer but lose his deposit, d. If the loan proves unavailable, then Percy can withdraw his offer and get his deposit back. Correct answer is d. If the loan proves unavailable, then Percy can withdraw his offer and get his deposit back. A contingency clause is designed to protect a party to the contract from harm in the event that a specific event or circumstance does or does not occur. 
In this case, Percy's offer was contingent upon obtaining a loan with specific terms. If he is unable to secure the loan, he can withdraw his offer and get his deposit refunded. Question 54. Which of the following is an ad valorem tax? A. Use tax. B. Real estate tax. C. Value added tax. That. D. Income tax. Correct answer is B. Real estate tax. A use tax is levied on tangible personal property that is purchased out of state but used within the state. A value added tax, VAT, is a tax on the value added to goods and services at each stage of production and distribution. An income tax is a tax on a person's or a company's income. An ad valorem tax is a tax based on the assessed value of property. Real estate taxes are a common example of ad valorem taxes. The amount of tax you pay is calculated based on the property's assessed value and the tax rate set by the local government. Question 55. Sellers can extend credit to a buyer through use of a A. Deed B. Option C. Land contract D. Easement Correct answer is C. Land contract. A land contract, also known as a contract for deed or installment sale contract, is a type of seller financing arrangement where the seller extends credit to the buyer. The buyer makes periodic payments to the seller, and the seller retains title to the property until the full purchase price is paid. Once the full purchase price is paid, the seller transfers title to the buyer. Under the terms of a land contract, the buyer assumes ownership of the property so long as he meets the terms of the contract. Land contracts provide property buyers with an opportunity to buy a tract of land or a building without having to qualify for a mortgage. Question 56. The essential elements of a valid escrow is a A binding agreement between the buyer and seller B. Recording of the escrow agreement C. Delivery of something of value to a neutral third party D. Both A and C Correct answer is D. Both A and C While recording the escrow agreement can be helpful for creating a public record, it's not an essential element of a valid escrow. The agreement can be valid even if it's not recorded. An essential element of a valid escrow is a binding agreement between the buyer and seller, along with the delivery of something of value to a neutral third party. The Bureau of Real Estate notes that what is being delivered can be in the form of money, written instruments, documents, personal property, or other things of value, to be held until the happening of specified events or the performance of described conditions in the escrow agreement. This creates a legally binding agreement that outlines the terms of the transaction and ensures that the funds and documents are held securely until the conditions of the sale are met. Therefore, both a binding agreement between the buyer and seller and the delivery of something of value to a neutral third party are essential elements of a valid escrow. Question 57. Which of the following is true regarding the preparation of an offer? A. A broker is not responsible for any negligence in filling out an offer form. B. A broker can offer limited legal advice regarding a clause in the offer. C. A broker can not fill out pre-printed offer forms. D. The buyer can compose his own offer. Correct answer is D. The buyer can compose his own offer. Although a buyer can compose his own offer, his broker will still be negligent for any material errors it contains. A real estate professional who is not an attorney can never offer legal advice to a client under any circumstances. Real estate agents can fill out printed forms while still being held liable for any mistakes. Question 58. If a first trust deed contains a provision referring to a previously recorded instrument, that likely refers to a fictitious trust deed, b. Acceleration clause, c. Subordination clause, d. None of the above. Correct answer is a fictitious trust deed. The term fictitious deed of trust is a modern legal term referring to a general deed of trust recordable in every California county, containing all the standard provisions normally used in actual transactions. The pre-recorded fictitious deed is incorporated by reference in each short-form instrument prepared for a particular transaction. Question 59. A tenant agrees to pay a predetermined rent of $1,000 per month, while the landlord will pay other expenses such as taxes, maintenance and insurance.
This type of lease is called a A graduated lease B. Percentage lease C. Fixed lease D. Net lease Correct answer is C. Fixed lease Graduated lease Where the rent increases over time Percentage lease Where the rent is based on a percentage of the tenant's sales or revenue Net lease where the tenant pays base rent plus a portion or all of the operating expenses. In a fixed lease, the tenant agrees to pay a set amount of rent each month for the entire duration of the lease. This rent amount does not change throughout the term of the lease. Question 60. Money spent on improvements to property, which adds to its value or prolongs its useful life, is called A. Capital Expenditures B. Boot C. Repairs D. Renovations Correct answer is A. Capital Expenditures Capital expenditures refer to investments made in a property to improve its value or extend its useful life. These expenditures are typically considered long-term assets and are not expensed in the same year they are incurred. Instead, they are depreciated over the asset's useful life. Question 61 the kind of loan usually made by a private lender, with a high rate of interest and backed by the value of the property, not the borrower's credit score, is A. A soft money mortgage, B. Hard money mortgage, C. Construction mortgage, D. Package mortgage. Correct answer is B. Hard money mortgage. A soft money mortgage is a term that is not commonly used in the real estate industry. A construction mortgage is a loan used to finance the construction of a new building. A package mortgage is a mortgage that includes both real property and personal property as collateral. A hard money mortgage is a type of short-term loan that is secured by the property itself, rather than the borrower's creditworthiness. These loans are often used for quick real estate transactions, such as fix and flip projects or bridge financing. They typically have higher interest rates than traditional mortgages, but they can be a valuable option for borrowers who need financing quickly and may not qualify for traditional loans. Question 62. For tax purposes, a person's primary residence is there. A first home purchased. B. Largest home purchased. C. Main residence. D. Only home purchased. Correct answer is C. Main residence. For tax purposes, a person's primary residence is considered their main residence or principal place of abode. It's the place where they live most of the time and intend to return to when they are absent. To determine your primary residence for tax purposes, the IRS considers factors such as where you spend most of your time, your legal address, voter registration, and driver's license. Question 63. Barney hires Ted to burn down Barney's home for the insurance money. They share a meeting of the minds, agree on the consideration, and all other material terms. Their contract is A. Voidable B. Void C. Valid D. Valid if Barney's wife agrees to the contract. Correct answer is B. Void. A contract to commit a crime or illegal act is void from the beginning. It is unenforceable by either party. In this case, the agreement between Barney and Ted involves arson, which is a serious crime. Therefore, their contract is void and has no legal effect. Question 64. Oliver and Nora operate a business together and are considering incorporating it. Which type of corporation would enable them to avoid double taxation? A. S. Corporation B. Joint Partnership Corporation C. Closed Corporation D foreign corporation. Correct answer is a S corporation. Joint partnership corporation. This term is not a recognized type of corporation. A partnership is a separate legal entity from its owners, and it is subject to double taxation. A closed corporation is a corporation with a limited number of shareholders, often family members or close associates. While closed corporations can offer certain advantages, they are not specifically designed to avoid double taxation. A foreign corporation is a corporation formed in another country and doing business in the United States. It is subject to taxation in both its country of origin and in the United States, and may not be eligible for pass-through taxation. An S-corporation is a type of corporation that offers pass-through taxation, 
meaning the profits and losses of the corporation flow through to the individual shareholder's tax returns. This avoids the double taxation that occurs with a traditional C corporation, where the corporation is taxed on its profits, and then shareholders are taxed again on any dividends they receive. Therefore, an S corporation is the most suitable type of corporation for Oliver and Nora to avoid double taxation and enjoy the pass through tax benefits. Question 65. Which of the following is not required to be in writing, according to the statute of frauds? A. An agreement that specifies it must be performed over a two-year period. B. An exclusive right to sell a listing agreement. C. A. Partnership agreement to develop real property. D. An apartment lease with a duration of three years. Correct answer is C. A. Partnership agreement to develop real property. The statute of frauds is a law that requires certain types of contracts to be in writing to be enforceable. While the specific requirements can vary by jurisdiction, generally, contracts that involve the sale of real estate or that cannot be performed within one year must be in writing. Therefore, while most contracts involving real estate or long-term agreements must be in writing, a partnership agreement is not specifically required to be in writing under the statute of frauds. However, it's generally advisable to have any important business agreement in writing to avoid misunderstandings and disputes. Question 66. Buyer Brian makes an offer to purchase real property from seller Sandy and provides a deposit. If Brian subsequently withdraws his offer before Sandy accepts it, then A. The seller can successfully sue the buyer for specific performance. B. The buyer can recover his deposit. C. The broker can successfully sue the buyer for specific performance. D. The seller can keep the earnest money deposit. Correct answer is B. The buyer can recover his deposit. If a buyer withdraws their offer before the seller accepts it, the buyer is generally entitled to a refund of their deposit. This is because there is no binding contract in place until the seller accepts the offer. Therefore, if Brian withdraws his offer before Sandy accepts it, he is entitled to a refund of his deposit. Question 67. A tenant with a lease to reside in an apartment building asks the landlord to repair the washing machines in the building's laundry room. The landlord ignores the tenant's repeated requests. In reaction, the tenant decides to stop paying his monthly rent until the landlord does the repairs. The tenant is A. In the right B. In the wrong C. Can bill the landlord for the cost of doing his laundry outside the bootling D. Both A and C correct answer is B in the wrong. While a tenant has the right to a habitable living space, withholding rent as a form of self-help is generally not allowed. If the landlord fails to address the tenant's repair requests, the tenant should follow the proper legal channels, such as 1. Send a written notice. The tenant should send a written notice to the landlord, clearly outlining the repairs needed and giving the landlord a reasonable time to address the issue. 2. File a complaint with the local housing authority. If the landlord fails to respond to the tenant's notice, the tenant can file a complaint with the local housing authority or other appropriate government agency. 3. Withhold rent as a last resort. In some jurisdictions, tenants may be allowed to withhold rent as a last resort if the landlord fails to address serious habitability issues that affect the tenant's health and safety. However, this should be done with caution and after consulting with legal counsel. Withholding rent without following the proper legal procedures can put the tenant at risk of eviction. It's important to address maintenance issues through appropriate channels to protect the tenant's rights. Question 68. The parties to a deed are called A. Grantor and Grantee B. Deedor and Deedee C. Vendor and Vendee D. Land Provider and Recipient Correct answer is a grantor and grantee. In a deed, the grantor is the person transferring ownership of the property, and the grantee is the person receiving ownership. These terms are commonly used in real estate transactions. Question 69. Examples of the police power include the following, except A. Building codes, B. Zoning regulation, C. Taxation, D. Rent control, Correct answer is C. Taxation. 
government's authority to tax is separate from its police power. The police power is the inherent authority of a government to enact laws to protect the health, safety, morals, and general welfare of its citizens. It's a broad power that allows governments to regulate various aspects of society. Taxation is a power of the government, it's not directly related to the police power. Taxation is primarily used to generate revenue for government services. Question 70. Broker Allen tries to persuade a group of homeowners to list their homes with him by forecasting that people with disabilities will be moving into their neighborhood, resulting in lower property values. Allen is engaged in A. Blockbusting B. Redlining C. Steering D. Pressuring Correct answer is A. Blockbusting Redlining is a discriminatory practice where lenders refuse to give loans in certain areas based on factors like race, ethnicity, or income. Steering is a discriminatory practice where real estate agents attempt to direct buyers or sellers away from certain neighborhoods based on factors like race, ethnicity, or religion. Pressuring is a general term that doesn't specifically refer to the discriminatory practice. Blockbusting is a discriminatory practice where real estate agents attempt to induce panic selling in a neighborhood by falsely suggesting that members of a protected group, such as people with disabilities, are moving into the area. This can lead to a decline in property values as homeowners sell their properties out of fear. Allen is trying to induce panic selling by falsely suggesting that people with disabilities are moving into the neighborhood which call blockbusting. It is grounds for the real estate commissioner to impose disciplinary action, comprising suspension, revoking, or denying a real estate license. Question 71. Someone who inherits property through intestate succession has done so through a A. Holographic will B. Dying declaration C. Decision by a probate court D. Formally witnessed will Correct answer is C. Decision by a probate court a holographic will is a handwritten will that does not require witnesses. A dying declaration is a statement made by a person who believes they are about to die. While this can be relevant in certain legal situations, it is still the distribution of property with a valid will. A formally witnessed will is a will that has been signed by the testator and witnessed by two or more individuals. Intestate succession refers to the process of distributing a person's property when they die without a valid will. In this case, a probate court will determine the distribution of the property based on state laws of intestacy. These laws typically outline the order in which heirs inherit property, such as spouses, children, parents, and siblings. Question 72. A legal charge on a property by a public entity to pay for public improvements is called a eminent domain b a municipal renovation fee c a special assessment d a public improvements charge correct answer is c a special assessment a special assessment is a type of tax levied on property owners to fund specific public improvements that benefit the property these improvements can include things like new streets sidewalks sewers or other infrastructure projects the cost of the improvement is divided among the property owners who benefit from it, and each property owner is assessed a portion of the total cost based on the value of their property. Question 73. The statute of frauds, the legal requirement for a contract to be signed and in writing, applies to all of the following types of contracts, except a. An exclusive brokerage agreement, b. An agreement to perform a service that can be completed within a year, See an agreement to perform a service that cannot be completed within a year, d. An agreement by a purchaser to pay a debt secured by a mortgage on the purchased property. Correct answer is b. An agreement to perform a service that can be completed within a year. The statute of frauds requires certain types of contracts to be in writing to be enforceable. While the specific requirements can vary by jurisdiction, generally, contracts that involve the sale of real estate or that cannot be performed within one year must be in writing. An exclusive brokerage agreement is a contract for services related to real estate and typically must be in writing. An agreement by a purchaser to pay a debt secured by a mortgage on the purchased property is essentially a contract for the sale of real estate and must be in writing. 
Therefore, while most contracts involving real estate or long-term agreements must be in writing, an agreement to perform a service that can be completed within one year is generally not subject to the statute of frauds and can be oral. Question 74. A judgment that has been properly recorded is a, and a voluntary lien, b, foreclosure, c, leave pendants, d, involuntary lien. Correct answer is d, involuntary lien. A voluntary lien is a lien that is created by the property owner, such as a mortgage or deed of trust. Foreclosure is the process of selling a property to satisfy a debt. It is a legal action that can be initiated by a lender who holds a lien on the property. A lead pendants is a notice that a lawsuit has been filed affecting a specific property. It is a legal document that is recorded in the public records to alert potential buyers or lenders that the property is involved in litigation. An involuntary lien is a lien that is placed on property without the owner's consent. A recorded judgment is an example of an involuntary lien. When a court enters a judgment against a property owner, it can be recorded in the public records. This creates a lien on the property, which means the property can be sold to satisfy the judgment debt. Question 75. A real estate salesperson is representing a buyer, while trying to sell properties listed with another broker. The salesperson is directly responsible to the A. Multiple Listing Service, MLS, B. Owner, C. Selling Broker, D. Real Estate Commissioner. Correct answer is C. Selling Broker. A real estate salesperson who is representing a buyer is typically employed by a brokerage firm. They are directly responsible to the selling broker who represents the seller of the property. The selling broker is the one who has the listing agreement with the seller and receives the commission for the sale. While the salesperson may also be working on behalf of the buyer, their primary responsibility is to the selling broker who employs them. The salesperson must follow the brokerage's policies and procedures and adhere to the ethical standards set by the real estate profession. Question 76. Air rights and water rights are included in the which are transferred when a property is sold. A. Covenants. B. Bundle of rights. C. Basket of rights. D. None of the above. Correct answer is B. Bundle of rights. A bundle of rights is the term for the set of legal rights afforded to the real estate title holder. The bundle of rights can include the right of possession, the property is owned by the title holder, the right of control, the owner controls the property's use, the right of exclusion, the holder can deny people access to the property, the right of enjoyment, the holder can use the property in any legal manner, and the right of disposition, the holder can buy or sell the property. Air rights and water rights are two components of the bundle of rights. Air rights refer to the ownership of the airspace above the property, while water rights refer to the rights to use water from a nearby source. When a property is sold, the bundle of rights, including air rights and water rights, are transferred to the new owner. Question 77. A real property lease creates a, an, a estate for years, b, attachment lien, c, freehold estate, d, an estate at will. Correct answer is a estate for years. A real property lease creates an estate for years. This is a type of leasehold estate that has a definite duration. The term, years, in this context doesn't necessarily mean a period of years. It can also refer to a shorter period, such as months or weeks. An attachment lien is a type of lien that is placed on property to secure a debt. A freehold estate is a type of ownership interest that lasts for an indefinite period, such as fee simple, absolute or life estate. A leasehold estate, like the one created by a lease, is a temporary interest in property. An estate at will is a type of leasehold estate that can be terminated by either party at any time. While a lease can create an estate at will, it doesn't always do so. In many cases, a lease creates an estate for years with a fixed term. Therefore, a real property lease creates an estate for years, which is a temporary ownership interest with a defined duration. Question 78. After a purchase offer was accepted by a seller, it is discovered that the first trust deed the buyer is taking over is $100,000, instead of the $110,000 stated in the listing. 
What remedies, if any, are available to the buyer? A. Buyer must continue with the transaction or lose his deposit. B. Since the mistake has reduced the property cost by $10,000, it is to the buyer's advantage and he has no right to back out of the contract. C. Buyer can rescind the contract and get back his deposit. D. Buyer must continue with the transaction or be liable to a suit compelling his specific performance. Correct answer is C. Buyer can rescind the contract and get back his deposit. In this case, there was a material mistake in the listing agreement regarding the amount of the first trust deed. This is a significant error that could affect the buyer's financial situation and overall affordability of the property. When a material mistake occurs in a contract, it can give the affected party the right to rescind the contract. In this case, the buyer can withdraw from the transaction and get their deposit refunded. Question 79. An escrow agent would debit the seller of an income generating property for which of the following? A. Prepaid insurance. B. Prepaid taxes. C. Prepaid rent. D. All of the above. Correct answer is C. Prepaid rent. Debits on closing statement are charges to the seller or buyer. In this example, the seller has collected rent in advance which needs to be turned over to the purchaser. This requires a charge or debit against the seller's account. Prepaid rent is a situation where a tenant pays rent in advance for a future period. This means that the tenant has paid for the right to occupy the rental property before they actually use it. Question 80. The horizontal lower edge of a sloped roof is called a, an, a eave, b, low point, c, joust, d, rafter. Correct answer is a eave. An eave is the horizontal lower edge of a roof that overhangs the exterior walls of a building. It provides protection from rain and other elements. Joust is not a term in construction. Joust is a type of medieval combat where two armored horsemen charge at each other with lances. It was a popular sport and form of warfare in medieval Europe. A rafter is a structural member that supports a roof. It typically runs from the ridge of the roof to the eaves providing the framework for the roof covering. Question 81. Upon the sale of a business opportunity, the seller is required to collect sales tax from the buyer on the A. Inventory included in the sale. B. Goodwill. C. Projected future earnings that will occur in the year after the sale. D. Fixtures and furniture that are part of the business. Correct answer is D. Fixtures and furniture that are part of the business. When selling a business, the seller is generally responsible for collecting sales tax on the tangible personal property being transferred. This includes items like fixtures. These are items permanently attached to the property, such as built-in cabinets or shelving. Furniture, tables, chairs, desks, and other movable items used in the business. While inventory is considered tangible personal property, it's usually not subject to sales tax when sold as part of a business. Goodwill is the intangible value of a business, such as its reputation or customer base. It's generally not subject to sales tax. Projected future earnings are not tangible assets and are not subject to sales tax. Question 82. A broker employed by the seller will owe a duty to the buyer if a. The broker's actions go beyond the scope of his agreement with the seller. B. The sale does not close. C. There is a mistake made in filing the paperwork for a sale. D. None of the above. Correct answer is A. The broker's actions go beyond the scope of his agreement with the seller. A broker employed by the seller owes a fiduciary duty to the seller, not the buyer. This means the broker's primary obligation is to act in the best interests of the seller. However, there are situations where a broker's actions could inadvertently create a duty to the buyer. If the broker's actions go beyond the scope of their agreement with the seller and benefit the buyer, the buyer might be able to argue that an agency relationship was created with the broker. In such cases, the broker would owe a fiduciary duty to the buyer, requiring them to act in the buyer's best interests. Question 83. With an FHA loan, a primary benefit to a lender is A loan-to-income ratio is higher. B. More robust bond yields. C. 
mortgage insurance d alternative financing correct answer is c mortgage insurance the primary benefit of fha loans for lenders is the mortgage insurance provided by the federal housing administration fha this insurance protects lenders against losses in the event of a borrower defaulting on the loan here's why one reduced risk with fha insurance lenders have less risk of losing money if a borrower defaults two more flexible lending this reduced risk allows lenders to offer loans to borrowers with lower credit scores or down payments three government backing fha loans are backed by the federal government which provides additional security for lenders while fha loans do have other benefits for borrowers such as lower down payment requirements and more flexible qualifying criteria the primary benefit for lenders is the mortgage insurance that protects their investment question 84 real estate agents owe a fiduciary duty to their a real estate commissioner b title company c principal d fellow salespersons correct answer is c principal real estate agents owe a fiduciary duty to their principal this means they must act in the best interests of the person they represent in most cases, the principal is either the buyer or the seller in a real estate transaction. Question 85. Broker Bart had an exclusive listing to sell an office building. Bart found a company to buy the building and arrange the transaction for a fair price. But when the seller discovered that Bart had not informed him that the purchasing company was owned by the broker's son, the seller cancelled the sale. Bart now sues to compel the seller to pay him his commission for the cancelled sale. The court will likely rule, a. The seller is obligated to pay broker Bart his commission under the doctrine of specific performance. b. The seller and broker Bart should compromise with the seller paying 50% of the commission. c. The seller is not obligated to pay broker Bart any commission. d. The seller is obligated to pay broker Bart a commission because Bart procured a ready, wiling and able buyer. Correct answer is C. The seller is not obligated to pay broker Bart any commission. As the agent of the seller, broker Bart has a duty of loyalty which obligates him to act solely in the best interests of his principal. The duty includes avoiding any conflicts of interest that might compromise the broker's undivided loyalty to his principal's interests. Broker Bart breached his fiduciary duty to the seller by failing to disclose his son's ownership of the purchasing company. This conflict of interest compromises the broker's ability to act in the seller's best interests and can lead to the termination of the listing agreement. Question 86. Which of the following would not be considered a good opportunity for a real estate investor? A good property in a declining neighborhood, b. Poor property in an up-and-coming neighborhood, c underperforming property d cosmetically damaged property correct answer is a good property in a declining neighborhood an investor with strong management skills and experience will want to work with properties even if they are unkempt or ill-managed as long as they are located in aspiring and promising neighborhoods it is believed such properties can turn profitable with the right management question 87 a property is listed for sale with an agreement to pay the broker a commission of 7% of the sale price. The broker decides to pay 40% of the commission to his salesman. Now, if the property sells for $650,000, how much commission will the salesman earn? A. $18,200 B. $22,000 C. $45,500 D. It is unlawful for the broker to compensate the salesman out of the commission the broker earned. Correct answer is a dollar eighteen thousand two hundred. Formula: P equals WX commission percent. Change the percentage seven percent to a decimal number zero point zero seven. P equals six hundred fifty thousand dollars times zero point zero seven equals forty five thousand dollars. The total commission is forty five thousand five hundred dollars of which 40% of the total commission will be passed on to the salesman. Again, apply the percentage formula to determine the amount of the salesman's share. P equals $45,500 times 0.40 equals $18,200. Question 88. 
If rises are seen in both the employment rate and overall consumer confidence, then the following will likely occur in the next several months, except a personal income will go up, b. New home construction will rise, c. Existing home sales will increase, d. The stock market will rise by at least 15%. Correct answer is d. The stock market will rise by at least 15%. The employment rate and consumer confidence are both reliable indicators of how the economy is doing. When they go up, it is likely that consumers have more money to spend and existing home sales and construction will move upward. The stock market is much harder to predict, and can move downward or upward independent of the general economy. Question 89. Proposition 58 excludes from tax reassessment property that transfers between a government agencies, b government and privately owned businesses c parent and child d public universities correct answer is c parent and child proposition 193 provides protection similar to prop 58 for property transferred between grandparents and grandchildren these propositions excludes from tax reassessment property that transfers between parent and child this means that if a parent transfers a property to their child the property will not be reassessed for tax purposes. This can be a significant tax benefit, especially in areas where property values have increased significantly. Question 90. Stan conveys an apartment to Ian for three years. After the three years are up, Ian continues to live in the apartment and Stan does not try to have him evicted. The parties now are said to have a a tenancy for years, b tenancy for non-freehold estate, c. periodic tenancy, d. no tenancy exists of any kind. Correct answer is c. periodic tenancy. The parties will continue under a periodic tenancy that was created by implication, the period of which will be equal to the period of rent payment intervals. A periodic tenancy is a type of leasehold estate that continues for an indefinite period, renewing automatically unless one of the parties terminates it. In this case, since Ian continued to live in the apartment after the initial three-year term, and Stan did not try to evict him, a periodic tenancy was created. This means that Ian can continue to live in the apartment until either he or Stan terminates the tenancy. Question 91. Lee Pendens remains in effect. A while the case is being decided, b. During court proceedings, c. Until the court's judgment is final, d any of the above correct answer is d any of the above literally meaning pending lawsuit recording a lee pendens against a piece of property alerts a potential purchaser or lender that the property's title is in question after such a notice has been filed anyone who nevertheless purchases the property takes subject to the ultimate result of the lawsuit question 92 a deed restriction would be enforced by a a court injunction b zoning official c district attorney d the bureau of real estate correct answer is a court injunction deed restrictions limit an aspect of a property's use when a restriction on a deed is not followed a court injunction blocking the violation from recurring would be the most appropriate legal action to pursue question 93 the internal revenue service will treat a real estate salesperson as an independent contractor if the a salesperson's compensation is based wholly on sales, not hours worked, b. Salesperson has a real estate license. c. Salesperson has a written contract with his broker stating that the salesperson is to be considered as an independent contractor for tax purposes, d. All of the above requirements must be met. Correct answer is d. All of the above requirements must be met. If all three tests are met, then the broker is not obligated to withhold taxes from the salesperson's compensation or provide funds to the individual's social security account. Question 94. The provision stating, a realtor shall not publicly disparage the business practice of a competitor, appears in the a commissioner's rules and regulations, b. California Business and Professions Code, c. County Ordinances, d. NAR Code of Ethics. Correct answer is DNAR Code of Ethics. This provision is included in the National Association of Realtors, NAR, Code of Ethics. 
Although it does not have the force of law, NAR, the real estate industry trade group, can enforce its own sanctions on violators. Question 95. Frank is a plumber who completes a copper repiping job on Noel's house. Noel refuses to pay for the work. Frank should. A file a mechanics lien, b. Seek a sheriff's sale, c. Record a foreclosure action, d. Report Noel to the police. Correct answer is a file a mechanics lien. One who supplies labor, materials, or professional services for the improvement of real property may be entitled to claim a mechanics lien, sometimes referred to as a construction lien. An unpaid contractor, subcontractor, laborer, or material supplier can file a mechanics lien, also called a construction lien, which is recorded with the county recorder. If unpaid, it can lead to a foreclosure action. Filing the mechanic's lien would be the first step for Frank to take. Question 96. Which of the following is not an example of the police power? A. Zoning ordinances. B. Building codes. C. Condemnation. D. Subdivision regulations. Correct answer is C. Condemnation. Zoning ordinances, building codes, subdivision regulations are examples of the police power. Which is the government's authority to enact laws to protect the health, safety, morals, and general welfare of its citizens? Condemnation is the government's power to acquire private property for public use, typically through the process of eminent domain. While it is a government power, it's not directly related to the police power. Question 97. If a trust deed is foreclosed upon through the process of judicial foreclosure, then a. There is a legally specified deadline imposed on the foreclosure sale to occur. b. The trustee must file a default notice to the borrower. c. It follows the same procedure as a trustee's sale. d. None of the above. Correct answer is d. None of the above. Answers a, b, and c all apply to the other kind of foreclosure action, the trustee's sale. In judicial foreclosure, the borrower has the protection of a one-year redemption period. Judicial foreclosure is a legal process that involves a lawsuit filed by the lender. The process is governed by state law and can vary from state to state. While there are some similarities to a trustee's sale, the procedures are not identical. In summary, judicial foreclosure is a legal process initiated by the lender to recover the debt secured by the trust deed. It involves a lawsuit, court proceedings, and a public auction to sell the property. Question 98. Farmer Brown's orchard was taken away in order to build a freeway. This is done in accordance with A. Eminent domain B. Police power C. Dedication D. Easements Correct answer is A. Eminent domain the police power refers to the government's inherent authority to enact laws to protect public health, safety, and welfare. While this power can sometimes result in restrictions on property rights, it doesn't involve taking property for public use. Dedication is the voluntary transfer of private property to the government for public use. In this case, Farmer Brown did not voluntarily give up his orchard. An easement is a right to use someone else's property for a specific purpose. It doesn't involve taking ownership of the property. Eminent domain is the government's power to take private property for public use, provided that just compensation is paid to the property owner. In this case, the government took Farmer Brown's orchard to build a freeway, which is considered a public use. Therefore, the government's action in taking Farmer Brown's orchard falls under the power of eminent domain. Question 99. If a lender accepts a deed in lieu of foreclosure, the borrower is still liable for A. Junior liens B. Mechanics lien C. Judgments D. All of the above Correct answer is D. All of the above. When a lender accepts a deed in lieu of foreclosure, it means the borrower voluntarily transfers ownership of the property to the lender in exchange for releasing their personal liability for the loan debt. However, the borrower remains liable for any junior liens, mechanics liens, or judgments that are attached to the property. These liens have priority over the lender's mortgage and can be enforced against the borrower even after they have transferred ownership of the property. Question 100. 
a real estate license applicant whose name is on the state's list for delinquent child support can a receive a temporary 150-day license b receive a temporary one-month license c receive a license at the discretion of the real estate commissioner d never receive a license their non-payment disqualifies them in perpetuity correct answer is a receive a temporary 150-day license in california a real estate license applicant who is on the state's list for delinquent child support can indeed receive a temporary 150-day license however they must provide a release from the department of child support services within that time period to obtain a full-term license question 101 an escrow agent is empowered to a alter the escrow terms when asked to do so by one of the parties b determine which financing offers the best terms to the buyer c select which security system to be installed at the property d call for the loan to be funded by the purchaser correct answer is d call for the loan to be funded by the purchaser an escrow agent or officer is a neutral third party whose role is to carry out the escrow instructions agreed to by the parties such instructions usually authorize the agent to call for the funding of the purchaser's loan. Escrow agents cannot make any changes to the escrow instructions or demonstrate any bias toward one party over the other. Question 102. A joint tenant is legally able to A. Lease their interest B. Sell their interest C. Encumber their interest as security for a mortgage loan D. All of the above Correct answer is D. All of the above one thing a joint tenant cannot do is bequeath their interest to anyone else in a will. And if a joint tenant should die intestate, without a will, their interest in the property cannot pass to their heirs. A joint tenant has the right to 1. Lease their interest. A joint tenant can lease their interest in the property to another person. This means they can rent out their share of the property, while still maintaining their ownership interest. Two sell their interest a joint tenant can sell their interest in the property to another person this will create a new joint tenancy between the original joint tenant and the new buyer three encumber their interest as security for a mortgage loan a joint tenant can use their interest in the property as collateral for a mortgage loan this means they can borrow money and use their property as security for the loan these rights are inherent in joint tenancy ownership However, it's important to note that while a joint tenant can exercise these rights individually, they cannot sell or encumber the entire property without the consent of the other joint tenants. Question 103. Junior loans are usually secured from A. Insurance companies B. Private lenders C. FHA D. Commercial banks Correct answer is B. Private lenders junior loans are typically secured from private lenders such as individuals or small financial institutions they are often used to finance improvements or renovations on a property that is already secured by a primary mortgage because junior loans are generally riskier than primary mortgages they often have higher interest rates question 104 private restrictions imposed on property can be conveyed by a contract b deed c general plan descriptions d all of the above correct answer is d all of the above limitations on the use of a property by the previous owner private restrictions can by transferred by deed written agreements such as contracts or general plan restrictions called the declaration of restrictions by the developer and subdivisions including the subdivider developer and may be conveyed i.e transferred by deed by written agreement i.e. contract or included in the general plan restrictions or developers declaration of restrictions and subdivisions question 105 sam conveys a life estate to his son john for the life of his other son david john marries sandy then john dies a year later the estate goes to a sandy john's wife because she is the heir of the life estate holder b sam john's father because the person to whom he conveyed the estate has died c david john's other son because he is the measuring life for the life estate d b 
because a death has occurred, a judge in probate court must decide. Correct answer is a Sandy, John's wife, because she is the heir of the life estate holder. A life estate is a temporary ownership interest that lasts for the lifetime of a specific person, the life tenant. In this case, John was the life tenant. When a life tenant dies, their surviving spouse typically inherits the life estate, unless there are specific provisions in the original grant that dictate otherwise. The measuring life is the person whose life determines the duration of the life estate. In this case, David was the measuring life. However, since David is still alive, the life estate continues. Therefore, upon John's death, his wife Sandy would become the life tenant inheriting the right to live in the property for the rest of David's life. Question 106. The penalty for paying off a CalVet loan in less than three years is A. $500 B. 4 months worth of interest C. 1% of the loan amount D. None of the above Correct answer is D. None of the above. CalVet home loans do not have a prepayment penalty. This means that borrowers can pay off their loan early without incurring any additional fees. This is a significant benefit compared to other mortgage loan programs that may have prepayment penalties. Question 107. Which of the following would be considered non-recurring closing costs in the sale of a property? A. Title insurance. B. Appraisal. C. Natural hazard disclosure. D. All of the above. Correct answer is D. All of the above. Fees that are paid once and never again are called non-recurring. Title insurance is a cost that protects the buyer and lender against title defects. Appraisal is a cost to assess the property's value. Natural hazard disclosure is a cost to disclose any natural hazards that may affect the property. These costs are typically paid once at the closing of the sale and are not ongoing expenses. Question 108. The release clause in a trust deed is used to release a sum properties upon partial payment, if more than one property is used as security for the debt, b. The escrow company from liability, c. The borrower from liability, d. The seller from liability. Correct answer is a sum properties upon partial payment, if more than one property is used as security for the debt. A release clause in a trust deed, also known as a partial release clause, allows the borrower to release a specific property from the mortgage upon paying off a portion of the loan. This is often used when a property owner wants to sell or refinance one property without affecting the other properties that are secured by the same mortgage. Question 109. Sam, a California real estate broker, has a prospective purchaser referred to him by a broker from Nevada. After a sale to that buyer is transacted, Sam wants to split his commission with the Nevada broker. According to the real estate law, Sam may A. Not split a commission with an out-of-state broker, B. Split a commission with an out-of-state broker, but only if the sale occurred within one month after the client referral occurred. C. Split a commission with the out-of-state broker, D. Split a commission with an out-of-state broker, if Sam, the California broker, retains two-thirds of the proceeds. Correct answer is C. Split a commission with the out-of-state broker. California's real estate law allows licensed real estate brokers to split commissions with out-of-state brokers, as long as certain conditions are met. 1. Referral. The out-of-state broker must have referred the buyer to the California broker. 2. No compensation from the buyer. The out-of-state broker cannot receive any compensation directly from the buyer. 3. Disclosure. The California broker must disclose the commission split arrangement to the seller. Therefore, Sam can legally split the commission with the Nevada broker in this scenario. Question 110. Buyer Bruce purchases a home from owner Orville, paying in cash. However, there is a mortgage loan attached to the home, which Orville is still paying off. Given these circumstances, what kind of deed will probably be recorded after Bruce's purchase from Orville? A deed of reconveyance to buyer Bruce, B. Trust deed against buyer Bruce, C. Deed of reconveyance to owner Orville, D. Bill of sale to buyer Bruce. Correct answer is C. Deed of reconveyance to owner Orville. 
A deed of reconveyance is a legal document used to transfer title to a property from a lender, in this case, the mortgage lender, back to the borrower, Orville, once the mortgage loan is paid off in full. The existing loan on the home is probably secured by a deed of trust. Upon receipt of Bruce's cash payment, Orville can pay off the loan in full and receive a deed of reconveyance. When that reconveyance deed is recorded, it will release the loan. Note that since Bruce paid all cash there would be no trust deed involved since no second lien would need to be created. In essence, the deed of reconveyance is a way to clear the mortgage lien from the property and ensure that Bruce has clear title. Question 111. The cost of a capital improvement and its impact on market value are A. Never similar B. Always similar C. Usually similar D. Rarely similar Correct answer is D. Rarely similar While capital improvements can increase the value of a property, the cost of the improvement and the resulting increase in market value are not always proportional. Several factors can influence this relationship, including 1. Location. Improvements in desirable neighborhoods may have a greater impact on value than improvements in less desirable areas. 2. Market conditions. The overall real estate market can affect how much value an improvement adds to a property. 3. Quality of the improvement. Higher quality improvements are more likely to increase value significantly. 4. Cost of the improvement. The cost of the improvement itself is a factor, but it's not the sole determinant of increased value. In many cases, the cost of a capital improvement may exceed the increase in market value it generates. This is because the market may not fully appreciate the value of the improvement or because there may be other factors limiting the property's overall value. Therefore, it's important to carefully consider the potential return on investment before making significant capital improvements to a property. Question 112. John inherits a house from his late Aunt Jane. Mindful of John's past problems with the police, Jane inserts a condition in the bequest that should John ever be arrested, title to the house will revert to a charitable organization. John's property interest is a, an, a life estate, b, fee simple defeasible estate, c, an estate in fee, d, tenancy at will. Correct answer is b fee simple defeasible estate. A life estate is a property interest that lasts for the lifetime of a specific person. An estate in fee is a general term that refers to a property ownership interest that can be either absolute, fee simple absolute, or defeasible, fee simple defeasible. A tenancy at will is a type of leasehold estate that can be terminated by either the landlord or tenant at any time. A fee simple defeasible estate is a type of property ownership that can be terminated under certain conditions. In this case, the condition is that John must not be arrested. If he is arrested, the property will revert to the charitable organization. Therefore, John's property interest is a fee simple defeasible estate. This means that his ownership is subject to a condition. If he is ever arrested, the property will revert to the charitable organization. Question 113. When a homestead exemption has been filed by a debtor who is 65 or older, the property is exempt from judgment liens up to a. $50,000, b. $100,000, c. $175,000, d. The homestead exemption was discontinued by federal law in 2010. Correct answer is c. $175,000. In California, a homeowner who is 65 or older is eligible for a senior homestead exemption that protects their primary residence from judgment liens up to $175,000. This exemption can be increased in certain counties based on the median home price. The homestead exemption of $175,000 also applies if the debtor is physically or mentally disabled. You may exempt up to $100,000 if you live with a family member. $175,000 if 55 or older, single, and earn a gross annual income under $25,000 or are married and earn a gross annual income under $35,000 and creditors seek to force the sale of your home. Question 114. The concept of rescission means that a contract is A. Altered B. Filed with the court C. 
cancelled d incorrect correct answer is c cancelled rescission means that a contract is terminated or cancelled both parties agree to rescind the contract which essentially undoes the agreement and returns them to their original positions before the contract was formed question 115 a note payable for interest only is referred to as a an a negotiable note b soft money loan c amortized loan d straight note correct answer is d straight note a straight note also known as a non-amortizing loan is a type of loan where the borrower only pays interest on the loan amount during the term of the loan the principal balance remains unchanged until the end of the term at which time the entire principal balance is due. Question 116. In the general accounting practices system for trust funds, all of the, the following tools should be used, except A. Journal B. Cash Ledger C. Columnar D. Beneficiary Ledger Correct answer is C. Columnar. Columnar actually refers to the other accounting option used for trust funds besides the general accounting practices method. Question 117. Which law mandates informing the public about the sexual offender database? A. Megan's Law. B. Mello Ruse Act. C. Unruh Act. D. Sex Offender Disclosure Act of 2002. Correct answer is A. Megan's Law. The Mello Ruse Act is a California law that allows for the formation of special taxing districts to fund public facilities and services. The Unruh Act is a California law that prohibits discrimination in public accommodations, housing, employment, and other areas. Megan's Law is a federal law that requires states to notify the public about the whereabouts of registered sex offenders. It was passed in 1996 in response to the murder of a young girl named Megan Kanka by a registered sex offender who lived in her neighborhood. While there is a Sex Offender Disclosure Act of 2002, it's not as widely known as Megan's Law and may not be the primary law mandating public notification about sex offender data. Therefore, Megan's Law is the federal law that requires states to inform the public about the whereabouts of registered sex offenders. Question 118. If a potential client brings a friend with him on a broker's tour of properties, the broker should a. Politely inform the friend he is not allowed on the tour, b. Double the number of properties being shown, c. Enlist the friend as an ally, d. None of the above. Correct answer is c. Enlist the friend as an ally. Potential buyers tend to ask relatives and friends for their opinions on properties they are considering. It's generally not advisable to have additional people on a property tour without the seller's consent. A broker can handle the situation in a professional and courteous manner. Here are some possible approaches. 1. Ask the seller. The broker can politely ask the seller if they are comfortable with the friend joining the tour. If the seller agrees, the friend can participate. 2. Offer a separate tour. If the seller is not comfortable with the friend joining the main tour, the broker can offer to schedule a separate tour for the friend at a later time. 3. Provide information. The broker can provide the friend with information about the properties being shown, such as floor plans, photos, or virtual tours. It's important for the broker to prioritize the seller's preferences and ensure that everyone involved feels comfortable with the arrangement. Question 119. A 50-year-old residential property and a new residence are on comparable lots. The cost approach would be more efficient in appraising the a new residence, b. Old residence, c. Either residence, d. The cost approach cannot be used for residential properties. Correct answer is a new residence. The cost approach is more efficient for the, the new residence than the 50-year-old one because of having to calculate the depreciation for the older property. Question 120. A formal declaration that an affidavit is true by someone whose beliefs prohibit taking an oath is called a and. A. Assertion B. Proclamation C. Affidavit D. Affirmation Correct answer is D. Affirmation An affirmation is used to declare the truth solemnly and formally but not under oath. They are usually utilized by persons who decline to take an oath for religious reasons. Question 121. 
Companies wishing to act as an escrow officer must apply for an escrow license to the A. Bureau of Real Estate B. Better Business Bureau C. Department of Business Oversight D. HUD Correct answer is C. Department of Business Oversight A. Licensed escrow company, which is also known as an independent escrow company, is licensed by the CA Department of Business Oversight, formerly known as the Department of Corporations. Question 122. A vertical load such as a floor or the roof is supported by A. Interior sheathing B. Siding C. Supportive joisters D. Load-bearing walls Correct answer is D. Load-bearing walls. Load-bearing walls are specifically designed to support the weight of the structure above them, including floors and roofs. They transfer the vertical load from the roof and floors down to the foundation. Before a home renovation, it should be noted that, with newer houses or those that have previously undergone structural renovation like adding a room it can be difficult to determine which walls are load-bearing and should not be removed. An architect or engineer should be consulted. Question 123. If a purchaser under a land contract makes deposits into an impound account designated to cover taxes and insurance, those funds cannot be used for any other reason without consent by the a. Beneficiary B. Seller C. Purchaser D. Impound Accountant Correct answer is C. Purchaser A purchaser under a land contract is an individual who agrees to buy a property from a seller over a specified period of time. In a land contract, the seller retains legal title to the property until the buyer completes all payments. During this period, the buyer takes possession of the property and makes regular payments to the seller. The purchaser is the one who makes payments into the impound account. The funds in this account are intended to cover property taxes and insurance premiums on behalf of the purchaser. The seller, as the legal owner of the property, benefits indirectly from the timely payment of these expenses, but they do not have direct control over the funds in the impound account. Question 124. The most significant factor in qualifying a prospective loan borrower would be a number of dependents, b. Debt to income ratio, DTI, c. Job prospects, d. Credit score. Correct answer is b. Debt to income ratio, DTI. Although an applicant's credit score will certainly be taken into account, lenders give the most weight for making their decisions to the DTI. The front-end ratio calculate gross income from all sources before taxes against the proposed monthly housing expenses. The back-end ratio measures income against all the applicants' recurring monthly debts. Question 125. Jerry and Ronnie form a partnership. Their partnership can take title to property in A. Only in the name of one of the partners designated by the partnership to hold title, B. Only in the name of the partnership, C. In the name of either of the partners, D. Only in the name of a third party, Correct answer is C in the name of either of the partners. According to California law, partnerships can take title in the name of the partnership, in any of the partner's names, or, in the name of a trustee as a third party. Question 126. The statute of frauds requires that the following kinds of agreements be in writing in order to be valid, except a, an, a listing agreement, b, contract to sell property, c, Agreement by two brokers to share a commission, D. Buyer agency agreement. Correct answer is C. Agreement by two brokers to share a commission. A broker's agreement to split a commission is not required to be writing by the statute of frauds. Question 127. Is personal property, not real property? A stock in a corporation, B. Airspace over an airport, C. Apple orchard, D. Mineral rights correct answer is a stock in a corporation. Personal property is any property that is not real property. It's essentially anything that is movable and not permanently affixed to land. This includes both tangible and intangible items. Stock in a corporation is movable, and so, it is personal property. Question 128. What kind of property listing requires the owner to pay a commission to a broker in the event of a sale? even if the owner sells the property on his own. 
A. Open listing. B. Exclusive agency listing. C. Exclusive right to sell listing. D. Internet listing. Correct answer is C. Exclusive right to sell listing. An exclusive right to sell listing is a contract between a property owner and a real estate broker. The broker has the sole right to represent the property and receives a commission, even if the owner sells it independently. This ensures the broker is compensated for their efforts. Question 129. Economic obsolescence is generally considered to be A. Unimportant B. Curable C. Incurable D. No longer a factor in most communities Correct answer is C. Incurable Economic obsolescence refers to a loss in property value caused by factors external to the property itself. These factors are typically beyond the owner's control and cannot be cured through repairs or renovations. Here are some examples of factors that can cause economic obsolescence. Neighborhood decline. A decline in the overall quality of the neighborhood, such as increased crime rates or deteriorating infrastructure. Changes in zoning. New zoning laws that restrict the use of the property. Economic downturns. Economic recessions or depressions that reduce demand for property. Changes in transportation patterns the construction of new highways or the closure of nearby businesses. Because these factors are typically beyond the owner's control, economic obsolescence is generally considered incurable. Question 130. A contract signed by a minor is A. Voidable B. Void C. Unenforceable D. None of the above Correct answer is avoidable. A contract signed by a minor is considered voidable. This means that the minor has the legal right to disaffirm or void the contract at their discretion. However, the adult party to the contract is bound by its terms until the minor chooses to disaffirm it. Question 131. When a real estate agent pays a portion of his or her commission to the buyer, the agent is required to A. Inform the escrow agent B. Inform the seller C. Be subject to prosecution by the district attorney D. There is no requirement for the agent to do anything. Correct answer is B. Inform the seller. When a real estate agent pays a portion of their commission to the buyer, they are essentially reducing the seller's net proceeds from the sale. Therefore, it is crucial for the agent to inform the seller about this arrangement. This disclosure ensures transparency and allows the seller to make informed decisions about the sale. Failing to disclose this information could be considered a breach of fiduciary duty and may have legal consequences for the agent. Question 132. A. And provides the holder with the right to use another person's property without holding an estate. A. Easement. B. Variance. C. License. D. Reversionary interest. Correct answer is a easement. A variance is a permission granted by a local zoning authority to deviate from specific zoning regulations. It does not grant any rights to use another person's property. A reversionary interest is a future interest in property that reverts back to the grantor or their heirs after the termination of a life estate or other temporary estate. An easement grants the holder the right to use another person's land for a specific purpose, without owning the land itself. This right is typically permanent and can be transferred to future owners of the land. A license, on the other hand, is a temporary permission to use another person's land and can be revoked at any time. Question 133. Which is not a required element for the creation of an agency relationship? A payment of consideration. B. The subject of the agency is not illegal. C. Agreement by the parties. D. Competency of the principal. Correct answer is a payment of consideration. A payment of consideration is not a necessary element for the creation of an agency relationship. An agency relationship can be created through an express or implied agreement, and it does not require the exchange of money or other valuable consideration. Question 134. An advantage in owning an income generating property is A. Deduction of depreciation B. Deduction of interest C. Both A and B D neither A nor B. Correct answer is C. Both A and B owning an income generating property offers several tax advantages, including 1. 
Deduction of depreciation. Landlords can deduct a portion of the cost of the property, excluding land value, over time as depreciation. This reduces taxable income. 2. Deduction of interest. Interest paid on the mortgage used to purchase the property is often deductible. These deductions can significantly reduce the overall tax burden for property owners. However, it's important to consult with a tax professional to understand the specific rules and regulations that apply to your situation. Question 135. A contract breach will excuse the wrong party's duty to perform under the contract depending on whether or not the breach is a minor or material, b. Compensatory or punitive, c. Practical or theoretical, d. Monetary or non-monetary. Correct answer is a minor or material. A material breach of contract is a significant violation of the contract's terms that substantially impairs the contract's purpose. When a material breach occurs, the non-breaching party is generally excused from performing their obligations under the contract and may seek damages. A minor breach is a less significant violation of the contract that does not substantially impair the contract's purpose. In most cases, a minor breach does not excuse the non-breaching party from performing their obligations, but they may be entitled to damages to compensate for the breach. Therefore, the severity of the breach, whether it's minor or material, determines whether the non-breaching party is excused from performing their obligations. Question 136. The market data approach in appraisal is based on the principle of A. Substitution B. Conformity C. Socialization D. Anticipation Correct answer is A. Substitution the market data approach, also known as the sales comparison approach, is based on the principle of substitution. This principle states that the value of a property is influenced by the prices of similar properties that have recently sold in the market. Appraisers compare the subject property to similar properties that have recently sold. By analyzing the similarities and differences between the subject property and the comparables, appraisers can make adjustments to the sales prices of the comparables to arrive at an estimated value for the subject property. Question 137. Principal Pat asked Brokerville to advertise, show, and then sell Pat's home to buyer Ben. After the purchase agreement was signed, Pat tried to rescind it by saying that their listing agreement had expired. When Ben is able to prove that Pat was aware the term had expired and chose to let Broker Bill show the house anyway, Pat will be compelled to abide by the purchase agreement due to the doctrine of A. Estoppel B. Ratification C. Unlawful Detainer D. Implication Correct answer is A. Estoppel the doctrine of estoppel is a legal principle that prevents a person from denying a statement or action that they previously made or took, even if it was incorrect. In this case, Pat allowed Brokerville to continue showing the house even though the listing agreement had expired. By allowing this to happen, Pat impliedly agreed to the terms of the listing agreement and cannot now deny its validity. Question 138. During the subprime loan era, Arranging low payments in the beginning of the loan term enabled borrowers to purchase more expensive properties than they could actually afford. When the interest-only period of the loan ended and large amortized payments were required, the borrowers experienced A. Capitalization B. PMI C. Payment Shock D. Points Payment Overload Correct answer is C. Payment Shock Capitalization is a financial accounting method used to allocate the cost of a long-term asset over its useful life. It's not directly related to the issue of payment shock. PMI, private mortgage insurance, is insurance that protects lenders from losses in the event of a borrower defaulting on their mortgage. While PMI can increase monthly payments, it's not the primary cause of payment shock in the scenario described. Points payment overload refers to a situation where a borrower pays too many upfront points to reduce their interest rate. While paying points can increase the upfront costs of a loan, it doesn't directly cause payment shock. Payment shock occurs when a borrower experiences a sudden and significant increase in their monthly mortgage payment. This often happens with adjustable rate mortgages, ARMS, or interest-only loans, 
where the initial payments are low but then increase significantly later in the loan term. In the case of subprime loans with low initial payments, borrowers might have been able to qualify for larger loans than they could truly afford. When the interest-only period ended and the principal payments began, the monthly payments increased dramatically, leading to payment shock. This often resulted in borrowers struggling to make their payments, leading to defaults and foreclosures. Question 139. Most lending contracts have a right of rescission, which provides the borrower with the opportunity to cancel the loan without penalty if the right is exercised. A. Within one day after the loan agreement is made. B. Within three days after the loan agreement is made. C. Within a week after the loan agreement is recorded at the county recording office. D. There is no right of rescission available to cancel a loan. Correct answer is B. Within three days after the loan agreement is made. The Truth in Lending Act TILA, grants borrowers a three-day right of rescission for certain types of loans, including home equity loans and lines of credit. This means that borrowers can cancel the loan within three business days after the loan agreement is signed without penalty. This right of rescission gives borrowers time to carefully review the loan documents and make sure they understand the terms and conditions. Please note that this right does not apply to all types of loans. For example, first mortgage loans for the purchase of a primary residence typically do not have a right of rescission. Question 140. Listing agreements can be recorded with a title company if A. Both parties agree. B. The broker has a signed agreement with the title company. C. The owner fails to file a written objection within 30 days of signing the listing agreement. D. Listing agreements are not recorded. Correct answer is D. Listing agreements are not recorded. Listing agreements are private contracts between the property owner and the real estate broker. They are not typically recorded with a title company or any government agency. Recording is typically reserved for documents that affect the title to real property, such as deeds, mortgages, and liens. Listing agreements primarily govern the relationship between the property owner and the broker, and they don't affect the title to the property. Question 141. A listing broker asks another broker to assist him in procuring a buyer for the listed property, and they make an oral agreement to work together. This other broker, called the cooperating broker, succeeds in finding a ready, willing and able buyer to make the purchase. However, the listing broker refuses to share his commission payment with the cooperating broker. The cooperating broker A may not recover his commission split because the agreement with the listing broker was not in writing. B may recover his commission split by pursuing the matter in a legal proceeding. C should ask the owner to pay him his share of the commission. D may not recover his commission split because only one broker can be paid per property transaction. Correct answer is B may recover his commission split by pursuing the matter in a legal proceeding. While a written agreement is ideal, it's not always required. In many cases, oral agreements between brokers to cooperate on a real estate transaction are enforceable. If the cooperating broker can prove the existence of an oral agreement with the listing broker and that they found a qualified buyer, they may be able to sue for their share of the commission. This is especially true if they have evidence of the agreement, such as emails or text messages. The key factor is whether there was a clear understanding between the two brokers about the commission split. If the cooperating broker can provide evidence of this agreement, they may have a strong case for recovering their commission. The cooperating broker cannot directly ask the buyer to pay their share of the commission. The commission is typically paid by the listing broker. Multiple brokers can work together on a real estate transaction. If they have a clear agreement, all involved brokers can earn a commission. This often occurs when one broker brings the buyer and another broker lists the property. Question 142. A real estate agent tries to persuade a group of people in a neighborhood to list their property for sale with the agent because members of a minority ethnic group are planning to move in, which the agent warns will lower overall property prices in the community. The agent's conduct can be termed all of the following, except A. Blockbusting B. Panic selling 
c against the regulations of the real estate commissioner d illegal but not against the regulations of the real estate commissioner correct answer is d illegal but not against the regulations of the real estate commissioner the agent's actions are illegal and unethical as they constitute blockbusting Blockbusting is a discriminatory practice where real estate agents exploit homeowners' fears by falsely claiming a specific group is moving in. This tactic aims to induce panic selling and profit from declining property values. This tactic aims to induce panic selling, often targeting racial or ethnic minorities, to profit from the decline in property values. This practice is illegal and violates fair housing laws. Question 143. Someone who is designated to carry out a specific transaction is called a A. Secret Agent B. General Agent C. Special Agent D. Transactional Agent Correct answer is C. Special Agent A secret agent is a term often used in espionage or undercover operations, not in real estate. A general agent has broad authority to act on behalf of the principal in a variety of matters. While, transactional agent, is sometimes used to describe a real estate agent, it's not a formal legal term. A special agent is someone who is authorized to act on behalf of another person, the principal, for a specific purpose or transaction. In the context of real estate, a real estate agent typically acts as a special agent for their client, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Question 144. The concept of, present worth of future benefits, relates to a market value, b. Income, c. Rental properties only, d. Commercial property only. Correct answer is b. Income. The concept of, present worth of future benefits, is primarily associated with income producing properties. It refers to the current value of the future income that a property is expected to generate. This concept is fundamental to the income capitalization approach to property valuation. By discounting future income, appraisers can determine the current market value of an income-producing property based on its expected future cash flows. This concept is particularly relevant for properties like apartment buildings, office buildings, and retail centers. Question 145. Sale or rental transactions of properties built before require a lead-based paint disclosure. A. 1998 B. 1988 C. 1978 d 1968 correct answer is c 1978 lead-based paint was commonly used in homes built before 1978 to protect public health especially children federal law requires sellers and landlords of pre-1978 housing to disclose known lead-based paint hazards this disclosure helps buyers and renters make informed decisions and take necessary precautions to mitigate lead exposure risks. Buyers of these houses must be allotted a 10-day period to conduct a paint inspection or risk assessment for lead-based paint or lead-based paint hazards. Question 146. Broker Charles took a listing to sell a home. The owner told Charles over the phone that the property was in good shape, and Charles never inspected it. The owner showed a buyer the property, and the buyer decided to open escrow with the owner, which then closed a few months later. Which of these facts are true? A. Charles has violated the law. B. Charles has not violated any law because the property has no material defects. C. Charles has not violated any law because the buyer did not ask him any questions about material defects in the property. D. The owner has violated the law. Correct answer is A. Charles has violated the law. Real estate agents have a duty to inspect properties listed for sale and disclose any known material defects to potential buyers. Even if the seller claims the property is in good condition, the agent should conduct a reasonable inspection or verify the information provided by the seller. In this case, Charles failed to fulfill his duty of care by not inspecting the property. If the property had undisclosed defects that were discovered after the sale, Charles could be held liable for damages. It's important for real estate agents to prioritize transparency and honesty in their dealings with clients to avoid legal and ethical issues. Question 147. Jason conveys an apartment he owns to Richard for one month. 
the property interest held by Richard can be called a a non-freehold estate, b. term for years, c. either a or b. d. what Richard has cannot correctly be called a property interest, the rental period is too short. Correct answer is c. either a or b. both, non-freehold estate, and, term for years, accurately describe the type of property interest held by Richard. Non-freehold estate. This term encompasses any property interest that is less than a freehold estate. Freehold estates are characterized by indefinite duration, while non-freehold estates are limited in time. Term for years. This is a specific type of non-freehold estate that has a definite duration. In this case, the term is one month. Since Richard's interest in the apartment is limited to one month, it can be classified as either a non-freehold estate or a term for years. Both terms accurately describe the nature of his interest in the property. Question 148. An agent owes a duty of honesty to a third parties, b. Real estate commissioner, c. Title company, d. None of the above. Correct answer is a third parties. Real estate agents owe a duty of honesty to third parties. While their primary fiduciary duties are to their clients, they must also be honest and fair in their dealings with all parties involved in a real estate transaction. This includes disclosing material facts about the property, avoiding misrepresentation, and acting ethically. Question 149. An estate of indefinite duration is called a, an, a lifetime estate, b, a state of inheritance, c, freehold estate, d, b and c. Correct answer is D, B and C an estate that descends to an heir and thus endures throughout two or more live, hence the indefinite years aspect. Note, though, that not all freehold estates are estates of indefinite duration or estates of inheritance. Other freehold estates are referred to as, estates not of inheritance, or, life estates, which exist only for the term of a person's life. A life estate ends when the person whose life the estate is based on dies. This person is known as the life tenant. After their death, the property reverts to the original owner, reversion, or passes to a designated remainderman. Question 150. A loan using real estate as security and not relying on insuring or guaranteeing the loan is called a A conventional loan, B. Conforming loan, C. VA loan, D. FHA loan. Correct answer is a conventional loan. For making conventional loans, the lender considers just to the quality of the borrower's creditworthiness and security for the debt. On the other hand, VA loans and FHA loans are guaranteed by that agency. Conforming loans meet the purchase requirements of governmental entities Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac.